But yeah, what what you were saying, it was uh, uh, about um, not being able to hear the sounds in the vertical plane, right? If you interesting, yeah. if you have two speakers, one on top, let's say your front your front left and your you know front height left or whatever, and you try to pinpoint something in between, you won't hear that, right? That's what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So and you, even, until you turn your head to the side, then you could hear it because it's now on a horizontal plane with our ears. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'll be yeah. honest. I mean, you're 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 um, going into a lot of detail. I want to make sure everyone can keep up. Um, I know for me, I'm like, oh man, this is so much good information. I want to. I feel like taking notes right now. I know, Chana, <laughs> that's how you felt when you talked to him. I, I have a full page of notes I was taking <laughs> <laughs> during during our last couple of chats. Yeah, um, and then like it's like an hour and a half. I'm like, okay, okay, okay we got to stop. We got well, let's let's get some topics and try to rein a few things in. Um, I'm still stuck on the part where you're saying like, you know, the the a single source of sound and how that source might have a, a direct sound and I guess reflected sound and you're trying to make sure you capture the reflections, reflections properly. Yeah, in that 3D space, right? But Joe, and, that's a very important topic you are bringing up and which is not understood because pe- people typically think about where a source is located and that has to do with our survival instinct. We yeah. want to understand, we want to stand the let's say where we live in our the our hearing system is like a radar going on all the time day and night yeah we want to hear you're safe yeah and the point is when you can recreate and you can trick your brain that you're like in that kind of environment that creates like a relaxed sphere atmosphere the moment your brain is missing one of these dimensions then it feels it is not a natural sound environment so with surround sound, I think that's one of the most important things with surround sound. Your brain immediately knows, yeah. Oh, there is there are like <laughs> there's like an axis missing. You it, it feels immediately that. And that was the, the biggest shock that I had the moment when you add, let's say, this 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 uh this plane in a way that it tricks our brain to believe, yeah, mm. that you are in that space, it creates not only an an, an form of relaxation for your brain, your brain has less effort to do to analyze the sound field yeah mm. uh, which is very important but what's, what's in the comment i hear from very often when people for the first time hear or 3d said oh wow man this sounds so much more relaxing that i'm used to hear from all performance yeah that has to do with the fact that we create that more natural feel and it has to do with the speaker layout as well if you put your speakers a little bit too much overhead and you create that non-coherence yeah then our brain picks it up again and you lose that kind of natural feel. Mm. Yeah. Would you say it'd be like, let's say if you're in a cave and you're used to this echo, a certain amount of reverb that you go, and then a sound comes out and then it has like different no reverb. reverb. Would you be like, yeah. what the heck? What is that? And why is it sounding like that when the whole time you're expecting objects to have similar reverb in that room? Is something yeah, like that? Point- yeah, that's a good question because I was not even answering your, your previous question about the 3D reflections. Yeah, mm. most of the sound sounds in nature they have, let's say, uh, what we pick up is all the 3D reflections. Yeah, let's say only if you're like very close to that source, yeah, but very close, yeah, then you hear, um, let's say, more direct sound than the reflected sound. I remember when I was, uh, my first production that I ever did in my first studio I had ever had, yeah. Um, there was like an acoustical problem in that studio. And I was not realizing it was having such an impact because I was sitting on like one and a half meters or two meters, like seven foot or something from my speakers. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, but I really hear these speakers. The rest is like perhaps a little influence, but mm-hmm. that's wrong that's completely wrong yeah 90 percent from what you hear in that room even you that that close is let's say is, is your room yeah and it's with a source it's the same thing the source uh, so, uh, sounds really sound completely different in acoustical different environment yeah and what you have to bring up is of course you have to capture those three that three three d reflections yeah Probably when you ever heard the demos from Auto 3D, the demo disc, for instance, that tractor is very nice. Oh, that's the best. That's like one of the best ones. Like you it's- cannot reproduce something like that with, with object based technology because then you have a mono sound and you just have that mono sound passing by. And in fact, what creates that emotion are the 3D reflections. You All see? right. So, 
And, I, I, and I, yeah, I don't want to throw you off too much, but uh, you know, I'm a fan of uh, binaural because I found that like binaural to me, I get a lot of externalization, and it's just you know two mics, uh, and you know I've heard stuff where it sounds like I can pinpoint how far something is, and you know the head transfer function and all that is kind of just worked out because it's right there. You know, it doesn't have to figure out where the reflection should be; it just captures it as your ears would kind of capture it. Um, anyway, uh, the thing that's interesting about that is even though I'm wearing, let's say, headphones or in-ear monitors, I can hear something externalized maybe 13 feet away. Mm -hmm. uh, is that And that's something that I really haven't experienced too much with any surround formats. Um, I haven't, uh, you know, to be honest, I haven't tried too much Oro 3D stuff, so I can't speak on that. But what I can say is nothing really goes outside of my room. The boundary is the wall. So oh. if something's supposed to sound further, I mean, it just goes up to the room, you know, the walls or how high my ceiling is, uh, you know, something to that effect. Now we're coming to a very interesting point, uh, Joe, and that's the following, yeah? Um, I think you absolutely should try out Auto 2D because exactly what you described is what the format can do. You can hear sound beyond the speakers. And very important is then the nature of how it is being recorded. Because, let's say, these 3D reflections are important for our brain to reproduce, let's say, where you are in that space. So if you can reproduce the most important ones, which is what we try to do with our format, I think our format is selected as, let's say, very efficient, yeah? Um, you're coming very close to, let's say, the natural reproduction of those sounds. And most of the sound reproductions for our brain, very important, are located between ear level and about 30 degrees. And that's exactly where our speaker layouts are, all around listener. And then you can create that depth. And that's what you cannot create if you would, if I, if Auto Max, for instance, we, I did a lot of uh, tests with, with object-based technology like more than 15 years ago. And I was always surprised coming to that point, what you exactly described. Yeah. Now, I can tell you that if you have the right speaker layout, that you can reproduce a much precise, better localization of that object when you have those 3D reflections inside. So you use like just only 10 channels compared to, an, an, uh, let's say, a source with some metadata and you're going to move it around because mm. you miss, of course, let's say, the relationship and all the changes of the corners with these 3D reflections, how, how it comes to you. Mm. And so even if you have... That I let me put it like that. Wave field synthesis is very interesting. You know, wave field synthesis, the idea, I'm going to describe it very easy that you understand it. Instead of using two microphones and two speakers, you make a front of microphones, like in, 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 in 10 feet, you have like 15 microphones, and you put in again 15 speakers to reproduce every speaker. Now, you can reproduce a wave front like that. Yeah. Now, the interesting point is that with reproducing that, you have much more that, that kind of three-dimensional feel. You really feel the depth as well before and behind the speakers. With wave field synthesis, when you use that amount of a lot of speakers in front of you, you can position even sounds up front of speakers. Mm. Yeah. But then, if you do that, you have, let's say, because of all the speakers, there's like, of course, an, an comp filtering between those distances because, you know, every distance is related to a kind of frequency and all is harmonics. Yeah. So that means the, the sound color is not so natural. So you gain, let's say, position. You gain, let's say, the place where certain source sounds are located. But it has a less, let's say, it is not as good, let's say, for the timbre, for the sound color. Mm. And now in music especially in music, the timbre is very important. Yeah? Sure. People, uh, yeah. they, they, let's say, they rehearse a whole life to have a good sound. Yeah. So, and the, the, what you try not to kill if you record them is, let's say, that sound quality. Yeah. So, with, with this, let's say, in all this kind of technology, there are like pros and cons. Sometimes what you gain on, let's say, having more the ability to position certain things and the depth, then you mm -hmm. lose a little more in the timbre. Mm -hmm. Be aware that we cannot reproduce natural sounds. Even with a million speakers around us, we will not be able to reproduce natural sound. That's how sensitive our ear system is. That's another topic I'm happy to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> but say the amount of information that we go every second through our life, it's really amazing. Yeah, 
Right. Uh, here's here's a question from Mac, uh, Matt Buckmaster. Doesn't the object-based decoder, Oro, Atmos, et cetera, create the appropriate reflections for the various objects based on the locations specified in the metadata? That's a very good question. Yeah, It is not. Mm. Mm. So we are, let's say what we do is we just only do, let's say this object, yeah, and it does not recreate it. What we can do is, let's say, with automatic, but the concept of automatic was comp something completely different, yeah. Um, what you can do is, of course, you can add in such a renderer, yeah, you can add a kind of a system that is creating these 3D reflections, yeah, but as a system, let's say, that is something perhaps we might see in the future, yeah. But it is not there yet in the existing uh, system that it creates on top of that those reflections. And so I, the, the the reflections need to be captured, exactly. Right, yeah. now, right now, they can't be created by the metadata, or whatever. Exactly. The point is, um, see yourself, yeah. How different every room is where you're in. Every room you recognize immediately. Let's say the kind of sound, yeah. How can you just recreate a system which is immediately picking up which object, how it is going to reproduce with the kind of similar uh, 3D uh, reflections? Yeah, so in, we are far away from that, I think. In my mind, as you know, I, like I was saying, I was so into this binaural recording thing that I was really like trying to figure out, like, I wonder if there's a way to extrapolate out from binaural and go outward to multiple channels and, you know, I that's that's the question like and i led me down this rabbit hole and trying to figure out who's thought of stuff like that i saw uh this guy uh va polky oh yeah okay yes yeah. um i guess he did a lot of stuff and dts picked up uh some of his work um because it was like open source something like that but um but yeah it, that to me that's is that ever possible I know this is a little bit off track, but can you no, take a binaural recording and e extrapolate it out to multiple channels and have it sa sound accurate? So now we're having kind of a shared experience instead of just me with yeah. headphones. Yeah. Now, the point is, let's say there's a different technology, which is called ambisonics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ambisonics has the ability, let's say, to pick up sound. Yeah. With just like a very small microphone system. Yeah. The, with the, and then, yeah. So you could, and yeah. It's very, it is very easy to record, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then it's trying to extrapolate all these kind of things and the more speaks for, let's say, the more channels you can uh, record it on, the better you can reproduce it. That's the call, they call it in order, yeah? The yeah, yeah. first order, second order, the third order, mm -hmm. and things like that, yeah? But the third order is already like, I think, 16 channels, yeah? <laughs> uh, but then what I found with Ambisonics is it's mathematically a fantastic system, it's genius. It's uh, Michael Gerson is behind this, yeah? Uh, it's already from the 70s. It's already uh, years ago when it was invented. Yeah, but it never came to the market, and it has to do with a few things. Yeah, first of all, it does not reproduce that kind of natural. There is so so. so let's say there is, especially in the lower forms, like till the third order, you still feel a lot of face issues going on. Yeah, yeah? I mean, I've I've experimented with those because I was checking out like some VR stuff, and I wanted to see like you know what sounded realistic and it, it to me that didn't sound as realistic some of the stuff where you could move around and like turn your head to me that didn't sound as realistic as just straight up binaural but so that's why i ask about binaural specifically um if there's a way to extrapolate out but anyway i don't want to derail what you're talking about here i just feel like it, it somewhat related somewhat yeah. related some people might think that, let's say, using a headphone that you can cl come closer to this natural environment. I think what you, I believe what is right, Joe, is if you have that typically like that uh, headphone, stereo headphone thing, yeah, then you're get very, coming very close to, let's say, a natural 3D field. But now what we do is the opposite around, yeah? What we do is we create all the speakers, yeah? A lot of speakers, you create that sound and you're going to binauralize that and put it, let's say, with, and these are again, how to call it, artificial tricks that we use to, mm -hmm. to bring it, let's say, in your headphones. And what you do is you add, in fact, HRTFs, you add reflections to, to create your brain that effect. It's again mm. an artificial effect, yeah? I just saw an interesting question before, yeah, which was about that, uh, that tractor, yeah? He said, okay, the tractor doesn't sound as an object, but I tell you what, if you see the microphone standing up and you see that tractor passing by, that was a massive beast versus the little, <laughs> So it was, you have all these reflections, yeah? And that is, yeah. that's another thing, yeah? And that's always the point. You have that emotional experience, yeah? But of course, let's say, 
if you compare it to the really nature things, you have much more you have much more information. And how big has a system to be that you can create exactly the same thing as in nature? I think that's very hard. I think there is at this moment not any kind of convenient system for me that is recreating the same thing as nature. Yeah? And so that's let's say I think the 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 message that I have is what, I, as I told you, even with a million speakers around our head, we will not be able to reproduce that. And then the question is, yeah, how to record a million channels or a million information and reproduce that. Yeah, um, and even with ambisonics, it's not possible to do it either. Yeah, so it is, it is. Let's say there is not a system that that can reproduce it. And and the question is as well, how to do it? Yeah, uh, efficiency. I think the art of this is trying to uh, capture it and reproduce it in the most efficient way. And that's what Auto3D is all about. Okay.